Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. I am so excited to finally be able to share with everybody this vision I've had in my head now for over two years, which is this airship. I've got over 50 hours of just design work alone on my computer for it, and well over 100 hours in crafting. If you want to craft along with me, you can grab a set of plans down below, itch.io, you can pick those up. If you want to win a set of plans, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment, and I will announce the winner next week on my Instagram. If you want to help support the channel, head on over to Firelife Fables Candle Company, TWC10 at checkout, get you 10% off your order, and a slight kickback comes to me. This was uh, brand new when I started the airship. <laughs> um, also, I just want to mention really quick that I have been working on a module that's going to be launched over on questgivers.com with DM Scotty, Gareth from the DMG Info, and my brother. I'll have a video coming out on that in just a week or two, so keep an eye out for that. And let's not waste any more time. Let's work on this epic craft. So if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, let's kick off this epic airship video with an astral plane candle by Firelight Fables Candle Company. You're going to watch this candle dwindle all the way down to nothing by the time this video is over. Now I'm using a bunch of different types or thicknesses of foam in this video half inch, one inch, and two inch foam. Having these plans is gonna make making this airship a lot easier for you. It's gonna give you a, some extra added confidence. It definitely gave me the added confidence when making some of these cuts. I'll tell you, working on the bow of the ship was probably one of the hardest things I ever had to do uh, with respect to designing these plans in the CAD program that I use, trying to get that right. But you're going to see it's going to get us just close enough to where we can use a sander to smooth things out and uh, it's going to look real nice once we're done. All of the tools and equipment and materials that you see in this video you can find on my website at www.tabletopwitchcraft.com. I've got links there to all the materials I've used plus links there to discounted spots where you can grab your Turantronics boards, smoke machines, candles, and all that at a discount. Now I'm just freehanding these cuts, taking things nice and slow. We want to use the Proxon to get us as close as we can. You can see right there I was off a little bit with that center cut. Not a big deal. We'll just slowly go back to the Proxon, take a nice slow cut, correct that. And again, we're going to fix that issue or any variances we might have in the hull with the sander in just a few minutes. Now, if you saw last week's video, this might look a little familiar to you. Uh, this is actually the second version of the hull. The first version is actually in the center of one of my mountains that I made from last week in that video. Okay, super important. That's as close as we're going to get that hull on the Proxon. The secret here is taking a cut off the left and a cut off the right. Back and forth and uh, keep things nice and even. All right, you can see where having the stencil is really going to come in handy and help with making a lot of these different cuts. Now, if an airship isn't your thing, you can use these plans to make yourself a pirate ship. Just mirror the front of the ship for the back of the ship. Make a few changes yourself, modify it, customize it, and uh, yeah, you can use this as a pirate ship as well. If you're enjoying this video and my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below.
All right, you can see the proxon was just high enough to make that cut right there. Now using the plant, it's going to give you an idea of where the compartment needs to be cored out for the smoke machine, but it's just going to get you close. You're going to have to kind of just take things step by step once you have the smoke machine in hand and um, just make the compartment really as big as you can so you have enough room on the inside so you're not really fussing with it when time comes to use it. I always like to take a paper towel and clean the end of the hot wire knife real quick because uh, a lot of times you'll get some leftover uh, XPS on there and it'll smoke out on you. All right, these small magnets aren't really going to cut it for us here. We're going to jump these up to a pretty large magnet and we're going to add a few of these in here. We're going to need these because these have to hold this compartment closed with the smoke machine inside. Now some of these might get in your way a little bit later on in the craft. Really these are, I know it looks like a, a death trap right there, but these are going to hold this compartment on. It's really important that you have a really good bond right here because that one glue joint is what's going to hold the entire back half of the ship onto the front half. So yeah, you might have a couple skewers you might have to snip off later on in the smoke compartment, but you want to make sure you have enough because again, there's gonna be a lot of weight pulling down on that back piece. And I like to add a little tacky glue to those skewers, even if I'm using hot glue on the foam, because it kind of lubricates them up and helps them get in there and slide in easier. Especially when you work with hot glue and you got a little bit of that time constraint, it makes it a little nervous, because uh, you know it's gonna cure up on you pretty quick. Having that tacky glue on there helps get them in place a lot easier. All right, time for the coveted OJ lid. I kept this thing for probably a year and a half once I knew I was going to make the airship, so I'm glad I kept it. It looked real nice on here. All right, one of the best things I made for this ship is this little docking station. You 100% are going to need to make something like this when you're working on the airship, uh, no doubt about it. And one of your best friends on this build is gonna be some patch and paint. You're gonna be able to blend this in real nice, cover up any cracks, sand these down, and um, yeah, you're never gonna know it's there once it's painted. It's always nerve-wracking when you gotta cut a solid piece of foam like that in half and then into all these tiny little sections. But, you know, with securing them properly with toothpicks, skewers, and hot glue, no matter how thin you make these cuts, you can see these are pretty thin. It's still extremely solid once it's all glued back together. And you can see the candle starting to get knocked down in height. <laughs> What a great candle. I really enjoyed this one. And make sure to save all these pieces. This is going to be the bottom, I guess, lid that's going to hold the uh, smoke machine and all the electronics in place.
And these holes are just gonna make it easy to pull and remove this bottom section right out. All right, now I thought this was a really cool way of adding some wood grain texture to the foam. This is a clay sculpting tool. Just be advised, if you do it with this method, it is really hard on the clay sculpting tool. Honestly, if you use this, you're probably gonna run through one of these bristle brushes in this video and end up tossing it at the end. So just keep that in mind. You might wanna save that for smaller crafts. You could always go to a bigger wire brush. And you want to remove this piece pretty quickly because we don't want any excess glue on the inside to adhere to that because that's got to come out and we're not going to use that in the craft. All right, Her Starts was nice enough to uh, donate some more molds for this video. These are like his robotic molds, I guess. I'll put a link down below to his site. You can go check all those out. And we're going to make use of these later on in the craft. While I had some things curing up, I decided to go ahead and, and pour some of these. Really fun little bits to work with. All right, now Noble Knight Games, they were also extremely nice. They've been waiting, geez, probably close to two years now for this video to come out. Um, they had sent me a whole bunch of things, these cannons being one of them. And I was going to cut all four of these up and just put them right into the craft. I was on the phone with Gerard Boom from Shifting Lands and he said, John, why don't you just make a mold out of them? You won't have to ruin any of them. And then uh, you'll be able to save the cannon. So that's what I did here. Believe it or not, I had never even worked with this stuff before making a silicone mold. Super easy, fun, and I can't wait to make more stuff with this down the road, hopefully this year on the channel. I actually end up making a few molds in this video. It actually became a little addicting. Now we're going to make it so that these cannons can be part of the upgrades for the airship. So obviously they need to be magnetized. A lot of the features of this airship are going to be upgrades for my players. Cannons, flat cannons, mortars, um, side thrusters, all kinds of things that my players are going to have to actually purchase for their travels. All right, up top, you can see the stables. I made this build, geez, close to a year ago. So again, that gives you an idea of how long this video idea has been uh, in the back of my mind. So just really nice to get that onto the ship. All right, we're gonna head over and grab our Anycubic Photon D2 using the amazing Dragon Sculpt from 3D Sean over on Instagram. Again, links to all the people that have contributed anything to this video, there'll be a link down below. And uh, while I was waiting for some things to cure, I went over and printed that off. Totally awesome sculpt. That's gonna be on top of the stables where the horse used to be. All right, those holes that you saw me just punch out right there, those are very important. Those are gonna be where we're gonna run our conduit and our wire to add our lights to this once we're ready. And sometimes the angle when you're filming, I guess takes the back seat a little bit when you're dealing with hot glue. <laughs> All 
All right, from Wayne's Workshop, you get a discount if you order through my website for the smoke machines. And uh, that fits in there real nice. And you always get some black tubing for the smoke machines, but I find that running bendy straws uh, is absolutely awesome and really gets into some really tight corners. Now, Gerard Boom over at Shifting Lands had designed some uh, all kinds of bits and pieces that we're gonna use and add to this craft. And one of those bits and pieces are these really cool little cogs that you can place on here wherever you'd like. There's going to be a link in the description below and on my website to the Tabletop Witchcraft Airship Pack where you can get everything I used from Shifting Lands in one spot. So check that out. We're hoping to get up the stable build and my haunted house build as a pack as well here. If not by the time this video comes out, shortly after. All right, now we just took some foam and we're gonna cut it real thin. I recommend adding your wood grain texture to it first, then cutting it into little strips on your proxon. All right, again, you can see here how it's gonna be nice to have the plans when working on a piece like this. It's gonna give you your dimensions really nice and uh, just make things a lot easier, uh, a lot less of a hassle when you're putting this together. And be careful if you use this hot glue gun. This thing gets unbelievably hot. Uh, and, you know, as much of an issue as it could be of getting it on yourself, uh, you don't want to melt a hole right through your foam, too. Now, I found this to be extremely, extremely satisfying using this light patch and paint to fill the cracks here. And again, I love it because you're never going to see any of that once it's painted up. All right, another gift from Noble Knight Games. We're gonna put these two different cannons on the airship. And here in just a few minutes, we wanna, I guess, shave this down so it's nice and flat so that they fit flush up against the airship. Again, held on by magnets. We're gonna make it so that the cannons turn. And also, we're gonna make this so that, I guess, they can be blown right off of the airship. <laughs> I don't know how much my play is gonna like that. But we're gonna add a bunch of wires and busted up metal here in just a minute to that too. All right, I didn't feel like placing little tiny bedazzlements <laughs> all over this. So I just ripped this thing off in one strip and placed it right around. And uh, I loved the way it looked, nice and easy. Now we're busting out the same dragon scale shifting lands shingle jig that I used for the stables. And it always helps to glue these in place together first and then add them as one big sheet to the craft. Now I wanted to point this out real quick. The hot gun can be used for lots of different things. Here I'm using it to actually level out and smooth out the foam before I place the shingles on it. it makes a nice hard surface and level as well. I found that adding the dragon shingles around the edge of the airship really kind of helped bring the stable build together with the rest of the airship. All right, time to dig back into our Hearst Arts mold, some pieces that we've cast already. And we're gonna start working on the little side, I guess drone fans that would come off the back of the ship when it comes to dock into a port. And these are gonna be like fans, so yeah. <laughs> Here I am just having a little fun. I heard from one of my patrons that uh, the higher you can drop the 
silicone, all the bubbles come out of it. And uh, I think it was really late at night right here. So anyway, just having some fun. Now this is one solid piece that I had cast from that silicone mold. And right there, I'm just trying to sand down a little arch to this because it's got to fit flush up against the back of the ship where you see that magnet in there already. Now I've used a little bit of super glue to help set these quick and that's some insta set. Love using that stuff. Allows you to keep on moving. And having these toothpicks go all the way through the foam is really gonna lock that center cast piece in place. And we're gonna cover those up with some rhinestones and you'll never see them. And you can see all the great things with a little bit of patience, what you can actually cut out on the Proxon with the proper jigs. Again, all my jigs that I use are from shiftinglands.com. All right, now this wood that I'm putting in here to make it look like it's sliding out on pistons is a little bit of balsa wood. And right there you can see all the cool little cogs and gears that I got from shiftinglands.com. Now I'm showing you right here how these go on, how they look for the purpose of this video. But what I did for all the rest of them was paint all of these first with my airbrush, then apply them. It's going to save you all kinds of time when it comes to painting this thing up. All right, I wanted a little bit of wood texture behind where the cogs are going to go. Instead of placing individual planks, I just scored this in right on the base piece of foam. All right, I cut these little windows for the cannons in to fit. These are also from shiftinglands.com. And now I took some wood planks and I made these about half the thickness of the other ones because I wanted to cover up the magnet. Really important here, the magnet that I just covered up, you wanna make sure to add two or three of those in a stack and bury those into the craft. That way when you go to add the side platforms for the cannons, they stick really well. All right, now this is gonna be the part where it's gonna represent the front cannons getting blown off this thing. So yeah, just add some wires, some random Hearst Arts pieces. I don't know what I ever would've used those for other than this, so it was nice to have them. Again, we're bearing a large magnet underneath that foam and that's gonna snap the cannons into place. All right, now those straws, they're not necessary, but I find them uh, to be very helpful to have those in place. They're acting as a conduit to run our wires for the LEDs that we're gonna have on the right and left side of the ship. All right, these are some great little LEDs. You can wire these up uh, to strobe different colors, uh, all with the use of the Canafrim board from Terraintronics.
And all we're doing right here is jumping from one LED to the other. We've got a voltage in red, we've got data in in blue and ground in black. And we're just jumping this across the, sh the uh, ship itself uh, from one LED to the other. If you're curious how these boards are wired up, how to use them, you want to visit Terraintronics. He's got a YouTube channel, extremely helpful and knowledgeable, and shows you just how easy it is to add LEDs to your crafts. All right, now what we're doing is trying to find a way to have the Dragon Bus fit nicely on the top of the ship. This actually took me a while to really figure out what I wanted to do. I almost tried to replicate the scales going down the front of the ship, but I thought that was going to be really tough because then I'd have to try and match the paint job by Sam Lenz and that just wasn't going to happen. So we do something different here in just a minute. All right, now one entire craft session was me airbrushing all of these little pieces. I used my Vallejo Air paints with some Vallejo airbrush thinner and flow improver. And I gotta tell you, I didn't have one clog the entire night. I was, I was so, so happy because I usually have clogs, but this was an amazing event. I don't know what else to call it. It was really awesome. Now, I just wanted to show this real quick, how I tried to replicate the scales going down the front of the ship. I wasn't extremely happy with it. I wanted to be really happy with it. I wasn't. So I knew I was gonna have an issue also matching Sam Lenz's paint job. So while we talk to Sam, let's see what I actually decide to do for the front of the ship. All right, everybody, for those of you who don't know who this legend is right here, this is Sam Lenz. And in my opinion, one of the most amazing miniature art, fantasy miniature art painters out there. Sam, how you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to have you here. I'm super pumped to have you working and collaborating on this. You're painting a shadow dragon miniature for me or bust that's going to be on yeah. the airship yeah yeah it was, it was fun trying to uh because the dragon is it's a really great sculpt it looks very realistic yeah and i thought about this for a long time i need to make it look unreal it needs to look like something constructed like the rest of the ship so it's kind of fun and so I, I made up for that like the eyes are gold the horns mm -hmm. are, are like you know brass and gold so it doesn't look yeah. like it's alive yeah yeah I've seen a couple little pictures of you that you sent me um, over text. It looks absolutely awesome. I can't wait to actually get it in my hands and check it out and, and fit it into the ship. So, oh, um, yeah. yeah. Huge fan. Like I said, I've been following you for quite a while. I think the first video series that I ever saw of you was on Tabletop Minions when you were doing the Sepulcher Guard. You know? I don't know if you remember oh, that. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, that was they got so me hooked, long though. ago. But yeah, got me hooked cool on your art. <laughs> What's that? that? It got me hooked on your art style, but also the Sepulchre Garden, which I still don't own. I should just go out and buy it, but yeah. Uh, it's, it's a good set. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, it's it's cool to be working with you because you've always been a real nice dude online. And you have big muscles, so naturally this, this makes me want to collaborate, you know? It's, this guy seems, seems all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Uh, I'll have to start another YouTube channel for lifting or something. We'll do collaboration. Yes, dude. All <laughs> right. You heard it here first. Yeah, right? All right, man. Well, hey, I really appreciate it again. Thanks a lot. Uh, looking forward to getting the, the bust from you. Do you want to tell everybody where they can find you online? All your different social media outlets? Yeah, yeah. It's Sam Lenz artwork pretty much everywhere. Um, yeah, I have a YouTube channel and a Patreon under those names. And um, if you just look up Sam Lenz on Instagram or Google, I think I'm the first guy. Nice. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to find. All right, man. Well, cool. Thanks again. And uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah. Thank you, man. Cheers. All right. Take care. All right, we are finally at the stage where we can add some Mod Podge to this thing. And it's always a great point in a craft because it really starts to bring everything together. Getting rid of all the different, you know, media that you have on this thing, turning it into one solid color, it's starting to come together and look like something. The 
You can see our astral plane candle again, knocking down about halfway through. And the paint job for this thing, I'll show you all the paints I use here in just a few minutes where you can grab those if you want. But essentially, this is the same paint job that I used for the stable build. So you can go check that video out if you want a more detailed description on how I painted this. All right, the Vallejo Metal Color. Anybody that follows me knows how much I love their paint. One loaded brush, and I painted all of this metal work right here in that dark aluminum. Love it. It goes on so smooth. Absolutely amazing. All right, now I've always wanted to do the checkered pattern for a playable type grid. So I went with it, kept my fingers crossed, and I was extremely happy with the way it turned out. All right, now when we go to dry brush and highlight red, we don't want to use that red color with white. It's just going to turn it pink. You want to stick with an orange color. So that's what we did there. I first hit it up with white just to brighten the area up and then it would make the orange pop a little bit more. This is just a black wash that I added a little bit of blue dye to, to get the wash color, but still keep the blue look. All right, these fans, those will come with the Tabletop Witchcraft Airship Pack that you can pick up over on ShiftingLands.com. As well as these awesome looking dragon windows. All right, now I kind of messed up here. My daughter helped me with this and I used five minute epoxy. I don't know why I did that. The real material to use there when making stained glass windows would have been UV resin, but it still came out really nice. Now here's where the detail starts to come into play. Take your time, do some nice edge highlighting. We've gone this far. Let's really get some good highlighting along the entire craft. All right, finally we get to add some of these cogs to our ship. I thought it would be so cool to have cogs running down the entire side of this airship. Spoke to Gerard, he whipped these up real quick. And again, you really wanna airbrush these or paint them before you put them on. And I used some tacky glue to hold them in place. Holds them nice and solid. All right, this was almost an afterthought. And uh, yeah, this was a really cool addition. These are gonna be air vents on the front of the ship where those cannons are gonna be. And again, my friends, <laughs> they're gonna have to buy the cannons if they want them on this airship. All right, how gorgeous is that Dragon Bus? Well done, Sam Lenz. Thank you so much for working with me on this video absolutely in love with the way that bus turned out and i'm real happy with the way i integrated the grays into the gold for the bottom of the ship uh, along the front as well it really tied in with the bus real nice All right, now this piece is very important. You wanna put that right on the bottom, right in the center, because one of the clear acrylic rods from last week's video from the mountains is gonna rest on that because we can't actually drive it into the craft because that's where the smoke machine is. All right, this is uh, a little insane. I'm going to airbrush a piece of fabric. <laughs> and you know, I didn't have it in me to actually make the flags, so I airbrushed it. Wait till you see what I do here. It's on the verge of insanity. 
Uh, but I did this and my mother actually sewed the flags together with a little bit of wire in between so that I could bend them and have it look like they're flapping in the wind. Now again, you can pick up any fabric you want, uh, but I just had this in my head, this color, this pattern, so I made it. <laughs> and the nice thing with these flags is it really, really, really gives the illusion that this ship is flying through the air. Out of the entire ship, it's these flags that give it that illusion. All right, as promised, here's all the colors I used on the ship for the most part. All right, now what we wanna do is grab one of the acrylic rods from last week's video and just stencil that out on the bottom. Make sure to get these cuts right. <laughs> After all this work, we don't wanna mess that up. And just core these out and pop them out. And you will be surprised at how solid this airship sits on this base. And this is all ready to use. I can't wait to get it on the table with my friends. Ah, so good. All right, I really hope you enjoy this video. A lot of time and planning, blood, sweat, and tears went into it. And I also want to thank all the people that helped contribute to this craft. We got ShiftingLands.com, Sam Lens, Terraintronics, Hearst Arts, 3D Sean of Instagram, Noble Knight Games, and Wayne's Workshop. I'll have links down below to where you can find all of them on social media. If you want to win a set of plans, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and leave a comment. I'll announce the winner next week on my Instagram. If you also want to help support the channel, visit me on Patreon. You can literally hang out with me live at night while I'm video streaming these. And we can hang out. You can show me what you're working on. You can see what I'm working on. And now I want to show you the modularity features of the airship. And then we're going to hit up that awesome montage that you used to from all my epic videos. So let's go check that out. All right, so I want to take just a second to go over all the really cool, fun, modular pieces of this airship. Starting at the front, we got these really cool flat cannons that spin, rotate. These pop off, you can replace them with these mortar cannons if you like. Got these over at Noble Knight Games. Now, in my mind, these gotta be purchased. So to start, my players are gonna get a little vent and fan that snaps into the front, which looks really cool too, all by itself. Next, we got these glowing lights. And in order to make them glow, you're going to need the Canafrum board from Terraintronics. Head on over to his tinny site. Check that out. Um, next, what do we got? We got some little cannons on the side. Again, need to be deployed, maybe even purchased one at a time. And when those are not being used, we're going to have some little doors that snap right into place. Okay, working our way back even further, we've got some side platforms that can be deployed on the side of the ship. And here you can place any cannon you want. It's all magnets, slap them right on there. It might be useful if <laughs> you add the base to them. All right, now don't forget that this whole top piece comes off so you have a playable lower deck on the airship, as well as different pieces of the stable build that come apart for different levels that are playable, the upper and lower deck. And the top of this comes off and replaces it with the dragon bust instead of the horse that was on the stable, as well as the dragon windows that we added. Working our way back even further, we got this awesome looking drone fan, and that snaps in right about there. And that's something in my mind that needs to be deployed when this is slowing down and docking at a station. Working our way back to the last piece are these flags, which in my mind really give motion to the ship when it's sitting here on the table. And then for our final effects, we have smoke coming out of the base of the mountain, which we did in last week's video. And we've got smoke that comes out of the side thrusters and the rear thruster as well. 
And don't forget that all the smoke can be adjusted. I'm about to smoke myself out. <laughs> can be adjusted with the knobs on the boards themselves. Those can be found on my website at a discount if you want to go check them out over at uh, Wayne's Workshop. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a really fun time making it. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you around. Oh yeah, don't forget, let's roll that montage.